Okay, so you've probably seen quite a lot of content on our social media pages, etc., um, about a DSP amplifier. Um, and that product was the Delta 80 DSP, which we have here, and is actually running these, uh, these dandy speakers, kindly provided by uh, Robert, our Dutch distributor. So the stuff that you already know is basically that it's a four-channel amplifier with 96K XTA <coughs> processing. And it has four input DSP channels and, four, uh, and eight output channels. Four of those channels power the <coughs> local amplifiers uh, channels and the other four are available as auxiliary outputs on the rear of the product. It also has a Dante networking option. Remote control is, uh, there's three different um, connection options. So you've got Ethernet RS485, as you'd expect with uh, an XTA product, but also USB. And there's also access for the user to all of the parameters, all of the DSP editing, everything can be done from the front panel. So the front panel doesn't just do things like preset recalls, etc. It has full access to all of the DSP processing from the front panel if you would like, if you want to use that. So we'll quickly run through the front panel. If you've ever used an XTA processor before, you will feel right at home with Delta. The layout of the controls, the way that the, uh, the software inside the amplifier and the menu system operates will be very, very familiar to you. Um, probably the only real difference is that there's one encoder instead of three. But other than that, anybody that's used an XDA processor in the past will know exactly where they are with this uh, new product. So we've got uh, a bank select button, uh, which cycles through uh, the four inputs, then the power amp channels <coughs> and the auxiliary output channels. You've got um, fast access to monitoring. So you've got metering for all of those input and output channels available when you cycle through the four banks. The channel select buttons at the bottom, again, very kind of XTA um, esque. The same metering architecture that you're used to with uh, other XTA products. And then four mutes. Again, these cycle through the banks. <coughs> On the front panel, you've also got a USB B connector. Um, when you plug a laptop into that, basically the drivers are automatically loaded, so you don't have to have drivers preloaded to um, connect to the unit. You've got a 40 character backlit LCD display <coughs> um, with a very wide viewing angle. It's also very bright, so it's easy to see in the dark. And as I mentioned a little earlier, you've got one encoder and then five navigation buttons around it for paging through all of the parameters. And then on the front panel, we've also got indicators for uh, remote control activity, um, AES inputs, and also network audio uh, being present. And then we've got protection LEDs, uh, channel bridging LEDs, and also uh, an in LED for the standby mode. So on the back panel, we've got uh, four analog XLR inputs. Slightly unusually, because normally with our AES uh, inputs, we would normally have A and C, but on Delta we've gone with C and D. Um, one of the reasons for this is that in the future um, we'll be adding a redundancy options so that you can set up, uh, say, AES inputs as your primary, but then have analog as a backup input, and the amp will automatically fall over to the, uh, to the secondary input. And doing it this way just makes the cabling architecture a lot easier to uh, manage. Then you've got the four auxiliary DSP outputs on analog XLRs. <coughs> then you've got the uh, Dante card with redundant connections. 
Ethernet control port, uh, GPIO with six pins, uh, and on the production unit, um, this RS-485 will actually be a Phoenix connector, uh, not the XLR that we've got uh, in this prototype, picture of a prototype. And then obviously you've got your four amplifier outputs on NL4 speak-ons, with C and D carrying channels A and B, and then channel C carrying C and D as, as normal on uh, all other MC squared amplifiers. 